Greetings and salutations. As we continue to read about the Texas governor, we can quickly identify a key characteristic of Texas politics, the diffusion of power in the executive branch. The executive power wielded by the Texas governor is distributed among other government officials who are elected and held accountable independently from the governor. In other words, executive power and authority is shared. While Texas utilizes a plural executive branch, others are centralized and establish a significant amount of power in the head executive. So, in this video, we will compare the Texas executive branch with its counterpart in the federal government. Let's begin. You may recall during presidential elections, we vote for both president and vice president as a ticket. In other words, we vote for both positions in a single race. Here in Texas, on the other hand, we independently elect the governor and lieutenant governor. Since the governor and lieutenant governor independently run in partisan elections, it is possible for Texans to elect a Republican governor and a Democrat lieutenant governor, or vice versa. While this is a highly unlikely outcome due to the partisan makeup of the state, it is nevertheless a possibility established by the Texas Constitution. We also elect five others to the executive branch in the statewide partisan elections, with a four-year term in office. These five include Attorney General, Land Commissioner, Comptroller of Public Accounts, Commissioner of Agriculture, and the Railroad Commissioner. Out of the five mentioned, the Commissioner of Agriculture is not a constitutionally mandated position. Rather, it was created by Texas statute. Compared to the federal executive, where all executive power shall be vested in a president in the United States of America, the president appoints, with consent of the U.S. Senate to most positions, all positions within the executive branch. Beyond filling vacancies, the only position within the executive branch the Texas governor can appoint is the Secretary of State. The Secretary of State is responsible for administering the Texas Elections Code, maintaining voter registration on behalf of the state, and managing state records. The governor also possesses the power to remove appointees, like the Secretary of State. However, we must note that the governor must secure the approval of two-thirds of the Senate to remove their own appointee, which demonstrates how fragmented the Texas executive branch is. If we compare the Texas governor with the president in the context of appointing powers, we can clearly see how centralized the federal executive branch is, as established by the U.S. Constitution. Some require confirmation by the U.S. Senate, but the president appoints, in no particular order, the Department of Agriculture, Secretary of Defense, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Secretary of State, Director of the CIA, Director of the FBI, Supreme Court Justices, Attorney General, Secretary of Transportation, Director of the Centers for Disease Control, and all ambassadors, like the ambassador to the United Nations. The president may also remove at their discretion, any appointee without the approval of the U.S. Senate. 
We know that foreign policy is strictly reserved for the federal government, and the president serves as commander in chief. The U.S. Constitution makes this plain and clear. You may recall, however, that Texas has a long and complex history with Mexico. To assist with international relations, the governor has directed, through an executive order, the Texas Secretary of State to serve as the state's chief international protocol officer. These additional responsibilities include coordinating and facilitating meetings between the governor and international leaders, and acts as a liaison to foreign government officials and business leaders by addressing problems which have not been resolved through alternate channels. The Rio Grande River. Is the center of some controversy between Texas and Mexico, ranging from jobs it creates, from national resources to defining our border. The Rio Grande River is an important characteristic of Texas. Sharing disputes between Texas and Mexico have been recent as of 2014. While the state's executive branch is diffused or fragmented, and thereby weakening the governor's ability to govern, the plural executive branch is a key characteristic of Texas politics. This key characteristic helps explain why the ballot is so long in Texas. After all. We elect seven out of the eight who serve in the state's executive branch. While critics of the political structure in Texas would argue the governor is ineffective and serves only as a figurehead, proponents assert the fragmentation of the executive power ensures tyranny is held in check and. The voice of the people will be heard. This concludes the companion video.